Hello and welcome to CIMA F2 Financial Management. We are still in Chapter 1. This is a continuation because we were planning to cover the key workings for your consolidation question. In the past video we we'll looked at the retained earning consolidated. In this video we'll look at two other key workings, the non-controlling interest working which is specific to consolidation and of course the goodwill itself, another specific, um, so NCI we'll be looking here and goodwill on a business combination another specific working now when you think of non-controlling interest to get your background right you must be in a situation where it's a parent company that has voting power in a subsidiary and that would be the case for over 50 percent of the voting rights therefore you have control so let's say you are having I don't know, 75% shall we take, that's voting power, that's control, it means your NCI percentage would be 25%. So if you look at it, we're talking only about subsidiaries, with associates you don't have this discussion because in effect if you talk about an associate, if this percentage changes is less than 50%, you have significant influence, you obviously are a non-controlling interest. So. We look at subsidiaries and the basic story of non-controlling interest for you to remember. Remember you are at the statement of financial position. So what you have to do is to take the net assets of your subsidiary at the date of consolidation. So net assets of subsidiary at the at date of consolidation and apply to that the NCI percentage in our case would be this 25%. So in other words, with non-controlling interest, you are taking the proportion of NCI, 25%, from the net assets of subsidiary at date of consolidation, and obviously you, are, you owe that part of the net assets to the non-controlling interest or my old minority shareholders called. Now, if you look what is non-controlling interest made up of, you will take think you're looking just in the subsidiary statement, the financial position, and you are taking the capital, that's the components of net assets, any reserves as consolidated. Uh, you may have some fair value adjustments that will affect your um, net assets. And then, of course, you have any items in the individual's company not recognized in the group statement, statement of financial position. You may have to make some adjustments. Ultimately, you get the net assets in each situation. It's subsidiary after all adjustments. You apply the NCA percentage, as we said, and you get non-controlling interest. You add all the NCIs coming from all your different subsidiaries and you take one figure between equity and liabilities called non-controlling interest. When it comes to goodwill, again, as a basic story, the idea of goodwill is the difference between what you pay for a business versus how much that business is worth. So the premium you are paying um, on how much it's worth at fair value. So let's see how we do a working for that. Well, first of all, you have to be aware there are two calculations accepted by the standards and the companies have a choice. We talk about the gross method or the net method. So we are presenting here a method which obviously would be the net method, but you could also use the second method will look a bit later, the gross method. But remember, the skeleton is the same. So what I'm looking here is how much have I paid on my investment, fair value of consideration given or transferred, it's an X amount, less fair value, always fair value of identifiable net assets acquired. And what are they made up of? Remember, these net assets we look at, net assets of your subsidiary at date of acquisition is very very important always with, with goodwill you go back in time and you calculate it at the date of acquisition so you take the capital and share premium you take reserves that that subsidiary may have at the date of acquisition and this way you get what we call the net assets of well target is the acquired company 
uh, at target's book value. Now, remember, this is book value, but you always, the standard tells you that it should be fair value. So in the questions, you may have to take the net assets of your subsidiary and adjust them for fair value. So finally, you're going to have the fair value of consideration transfer. This is how much I paid. This is what the net assets are worth of the subsidiary uh, at fair value, but we haven't acquired it all. Let's say we acquired 60% of that. So I apply the percentage of acquisition and I'm getting my proportion of goodwill. So goodwill arising in the parent company. What do we do with goodwill? We test it actively for impairment. Um, and therefore, you take 410 in statement of financial position consolidated, but test it for impairment. In case of impairment, you reduce the value from the consolidated statement of financial position with the impairment value and recycle the impairment loss in the consolidated retained earnings. Okay, and what happens if we want to calculate, to basically have a gross up value? What we are saying here, this goodwill relates to the portion of um, investment we paid and obviously to, um, to the net assets we acquired. But if it is to do the, the full value, the gross value of goodwill, goodwill, what you would need, remember, let's say it's parent again and subsidiary, right? And you acquire in this case was 60%. Now, the amount you pay to, to four zero, it's in respect, obviously, of the 60% you acquired. Therefore, 2240, this value here, is not the value of your subsidiary. The subsidiary has a bigger value. Now, because you bought control, you can't say necessarily, for instance, you bought 60%, oh, I just gross it up with 40%, I know the full value. No, because when you buy control, obviously pay significantly more than this percentage value, if that makes sense, because in effect, you acquired it, you control it all, and the value of um, a portion of shares that do not bring you control would be less than 10% of their overall value of the business. All right, so control obviously uh, pr puts a premium on the value you're paying, the lack of control or buying the control of it. So if you think about it, what we need to say as a gross up value is to say, I want to know the fair value of this entire business, imagine that, and I'm going to say less the net assets of that business, that will give me a total goodwill, a total goodwill if I were to have acquired the business in full at 100%. But that total goodwill I will get, so do you see what I'm talking about? Grossing up this figure and thinking, okay, how much is the total value? And therefore, less total value of the net assets of subsidiary, I know the total goodwill that would exist if I bought it all. Less the goodwill you acquired for 60% will give you goodwill that you have for 40%. That, of course, you will have to consider that is a top-up of your 60% goodwill you got here that will create what we call a gross goodwill, which is the alternative method of uh, calculating goodwill. So there are two ways of presenting information. If you are familiar with Kaplan Publishing, I personally like the way they also calculate goodwill there, because uh, but there is another way here we present, and I think people should choose their way, they feel comfortable, and just push on on whichever method. So one way of saying is, look, I'm doing exactly this calculation as here, I'm getting the goodwill relative to the 60%, and then I'm doing a baby calculation, and that baby calculation is basically fair value of the non-controlling interest that must be given in the question, um, the portion of 40%, otherwise you can't really guess it. Uh, so we also say it here for you guys not to panic, the fair value of non-controlling interest taken in the business at the acquisition, uh, the acquisition date must be given. And then I'm taking less net assets of subsidiary in the percentage of the non-controlling interest, 40%. That gives me the baby new goodwill, additional goodwill. That's one way of thinking of it. In our working here, what we are saying, I'm taking non-controlling interest at fair value. And then I'm having fair value of consideration transfer for the 60%. You recognize the value, yes, how much we paid. This must be given in the exam. So suddenly I have this implied total value of the company I mentioned earlier, less fair value of 
all identifiable net assets gives you the implied total goodwill okay and then what you're doing you take out this remember the 410 the goodwill you recognized already or you calculated already this 410 here yeah you know that so I'm taking the 410 oops too excited about taking the 410 here grossed up required for total goodwill would be of course the difference between 540 and 410 so that's the difference you can gross up your goodwill with how do you gross it up with increase your goodwill is 130 because that's the selected method of presentation and you're gonna put the credit on the non-controlling interest so non-controlling interest would be made up of this element plus a calculation of NCI as I illustrated in the earlier working percentage of net assets of subsidiary at date of consolidation. Well done to follow this through. I hope it brings a bit of light to some of the key workings on consolidation where a lot of points are coming. If anything, I would say this is sticking to the basics yet brings you quite a few points. And of course, any particularity, any adjustment you may miss, you may still be able to ensure pass if you understand the core workings of consolidation. And that is goodwill, retained earnings consolidated and non-controlling interest at least. Thank you very much for paying attention and hopefully you listen to the next videos up. Best of luck with Preppy.